The flags go up, and that off, and they go off to Esther's chase. Three miles, one furlong, short run to the first of 17 fences, and they're spaced across with the stable companions, Bron and Glen Gurley, landing together. Followed by Dun Boyne, just pipped 12 months ago. Handy is on the ropes with Espinito, Bella, and Max Charm. Poking up in between horses, the far side and the blue cap is Royal Thief as they sort themselves out with two circuits to go. Glen Gooley presses ahead from Royal Thief. Bron the inside of on the ropes, Max Charman out wide is Espinito Bello, followed by Dun Boyne. Chantreuse, ain't that a shame, and Angel's Dawn next on the inside, followed by Longhouse Poet, the winner of two years ago. As they race up the far side to fences two, three, four, and five, the third is the first ditch. It's Glen Gooley, followed by Royal Thief, Max Charm, Espinito Bello, Bron the inside. Or on the ropes, and ain't that a shame and longhouse poet. Chantreux snakes with street value, and Dun Boyne has been knocked back. Stormy Judge next, and then Angel's Dawn. As they continue uphill to fence number three. And it's Glen Gurley by three lengths to Royal Thief. And third, just Max Charm from the Grey Espinito Bello. On the ropes next on the inside. Of ain't that a shame and longhouse poet. Chantreuse could jump up in between horses. Slow at that one was on the ropes, has lost a place or two. As they race to the next up the far side, which is number four. And it's Glen Gooley into it. Over well from Royal Thief. Next is Max Charm and Espinito Bello. Ain't that a shame, not far off them with on the ropes. And then the top weight brawn the inside of Dunboyne. Chantreuse next, Longhouse Poet, Stormy Judge. Last one up the far side before the one at the top, and it's Glen Gooley extending the advantage, a blunder there by Max Charm, did well to survive. It's Glen Gooley heading on to fence number six, after which they have a long run back to the three in the straight. Has a reduced advantage of a couple of lengths over Royal Thief, Espinito Bello shares third, but on the ropes, ain't that a shame, and Bron and Chantreuse next with Max Charm. Longhouse, Poet, Stormy, Judge Street, Value, and Dun Boyne. Next is Angel's Dawn, and the White Cap is Frontal Assault, who's well back with Gevre, and then Fakir Delen and Deal Kerr, and any second now, the overall back marker. But they're very tightly packed as they head down on the approach to the straight to the next three in the home run. And it's Glen Gooley with a reduced advantage of a length over Royal Thief. And then on the ropes, who goes back up to the leaders. And then Espinito Bello, and ain't that a shame. Max Charm next with Braun. Dun Boyne, the pink jacket on the inside. Then Chantreuse and Street Value. And Max Charm next with Longhouse Poet. Behind them is Frontal Assault and Fakir Delen and Angel's Dawn. Gevre is next as they swing in for these three. And it's Glen Gooley. Coming wide into the straight, in the middle of the fence, the blue cap, and blinkers of Royal Thief with on the ropes as they take the first of the three. Ain't that a shame is moving closer. As they come now to the middle fence in the straight, this is their second ditch, and it's Glen Gooley in the red and white colors right on the stand side rail who's into it first, from Royal Thief, ain't that a shame. On the ropes, Bran, Dunboyne takes closer order over on the far side as they complete a circuit, and near the fence in front of the stands, the last one next time. Wide across at a mistake there by Royal Thief. Dunboyne has moved up to Glen Gooley on the stand side, and the center is Royal Thief with on the ropes. And then comes, ain't that a shame, and Chantreuse is next making up ground as Frontal Assault, and then Braun, Espinito, Bello, and Stormy Judge next with Gevre, Street Value, Max Charm, Angels, Dawn next with any second now, and Fakir, Delen, Deal, Kerr, and struggling as the previous winner, Longhouse Poet, as they've passed the halfway stage, they've eight more fences left to jump, in the Goffs Thayeste's chase, and it's Glen Gooley continuing up front with... In close attendance, Royal Thief, and then ain't that a shame, who's never been too far off them with Dun Boyne and on the ropes, and Espinito Bello is next with Chantreuse and Bron the inside. Of frontal assault, Stormy Judge makes a forward move. Ahead of Max Charm and Street Value and Fakir Delen next with Angel's Dawn, confidently ridden towards the inside of Deal Kerr, and then any second now, leaving behind the Longhouse Poet. A mistake there by Street Value, it's Glen Gooley re-establishing couple of lengths lead. 
Heading to the second last ditch. This is seven fences out. Royal Thief continues to lead the chasing pack with on the ropes and ain't that a shame. After them is Chantreuse and Dunboyne and Espinito Bello is next with Jevre and Stormy Judge. On the inside is Frontal Assault. Pushed along behind the leaders is Street Value. Bronze being knocked back on the inside. Over the next... And it's Glenn Gooley continuing to put in a very good shift up front. It's followed by Royal Thief and on the ropes and out very wide is Ain't That a Shame with Dun Boyne. Frontal Assault continues to make ground. Then Chantreuse and Braun and Espinito Bello and Gevray next with Stormy Judge and Street Value. Angels Dawn trying to pick up. And then Max Charm and Fakir Delen. And he's second now. And Deal Kerr well back as they turn to the fourth last fence across the top of the track. And it's Glenn Gooley joined by Dun Boyne. Two in front of Ain't That a Shame and Chantreuse next. Braun the inside of Frontal Assault and then on the ropes, Royal Thief is fading out of it. Then Angels Dawn and Espinito Bello is next with Gevray. They're heading towards the final four and a half furlongs. They have three more fences left to jump. And it is Glenn Gooley and Paul Townen from Dunboyne and Jack Kennedy. Precious little between them. In third place is Ain't That a Shame and Rachel Blackmore. Up into fourth is Bron and Daryl Jacob. Chantreuse next with Espinito Bello. Now being asked for more on the inside frontal assault. Followed around the home turn by Max Charm and then Stormy Joe. Judge two lengths to Angel's Dawn, dropping away is on the ropes, and then Street Value, Gevre, and Fakir Delen. In they come the final time with three fences left. And wide apart, Dun Boyne and Glenn Gooley with Ain't That a Shame making good headway in between them. The three wide across the track. As they come to three out on the left is Dun Boyne. On the right, Glenn Gooley with Ain't That a Shame. They're followed by Angel's Dawn, who's staying on in fourth place, head of Espinito Bello, and then Max Charm and Stormy Judge and Broadney. Next, this is the second last fence, and it's done. Boyne over the far side, challenged on the stand side by Ain't That a Shame. They're on opposite sides of the track. Glenn Gooley is coming, fighting back with Angels Dawn, coming to the final fence, and things are changing. Ain't That a Shame is re challenged by Glenn Gooley. Angels Dawn next and third, 150 yards to go. Glenn Gooley and Ain't That a Shame from Angels Dawn. Ain't That a Shame is going on to win the Goff's tie. Days, pulling out every stop from Glen Gooley, Angels Dawn, judge for the fourth, Stormy Judge, and Max Charm. There was a big one in him. Henry de Bromhead just being congratulated here by Joe Connolly after winning his second Goffs Estes chase. With Ain't That a Shame, Henry, congratulations. How good did that feel? Oh, yeah, brilliant. Yeah, delighted. Uh, super ride by Rachel and brilliant to get it for Rob Corr. Yeah, delighted. He's a horse who's been fancied in a lot of big handicap chases over the last couple of years, but today yeah. he went off a less considered 14 to 1 shot. Did that take the pressure off a little bit? Yeah, I suppose. Yeah, you know, he um, and, and you couldn't blame them, to be fair. Um, he was so he, we were really disappointed with him in the Troy Town. He just didn't seem to run any race. But Rachel said he was a bit unlucky and various things went wrong. And yeah, she was very happy. I thought it was brave by her. She was very happy to stick with him and and uh, the, the right call, obviously. Yeah. Tell us your thoughts watching the race. We know when he's on his game, this fella he's a real strong traveller, and we saw a lot of that today. Didn't yeah, we? loads of that. Jump brilliant. Just wondered, was he going to see it out, having uh, travelled as strongly as he did? And, and never quite, you know, he's been caught a couple of times in good races and wondered, was that his thing, that he did struggle? But by God, he saw it out there. He was brilliant. Yeah, fantastic race to win. I remember speaking to you with your late father standing alongside you yeah. after Champagne West. Must be a real buzz to win it again. Absolutely. It? It's like, it's a brilliant race to win. You can only see the crowds here and, no, oh, it's a fantastic race and we're delighted. What about the future for this horse, Henry? You had a crack at the Grand National last season. Would that be in your mind again? Yeah, I, to be honest, I hadn't really thought far, much past this race. Um, uh, it could, yeah, I mean, for my money, he didn't get home. You know, I thought he stopped there at four out or whatever, wherever it was, and he just he looked to be going the winner all the way. Everything went right for him, and I thought he didn't get home. But you know, maybe, maybe we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. He's still quite lightly raced, isn't he, for a horse of his age? Do you yeah, think there's a bit more is. in there? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, he, you know, he's probably, in, yeah, you know, there could easily be, yeah. But look, the, to win today was brilliant and, yeah, delighted. Uh, give us your thoughts on Sean Truss. A lot of people were fancying a big run from him today. Yeah, just starting to wonder, uh, even though he saw it out over, uh, over hurdles, I, I, I th his form is looking like he just struggles over um, further now, you know, uh, for some reason. I'm not sure why. Um, he looked to be going as good as anything, uh, jumping the one, uh, the fourth last, and um, seemed to. Darragh just said he petered out of it. Yeah. 
Okay, it'll be other days for him. Yeah. Rob Cora having some season now. They has yeah. Bob Allinger been in since Chatham. I know you were away when he won, but you must have been thrilled by that. Yeah, delighted. Yeah, he was brilliant. Uh, great to see him uh, some way near his best. And he's really good at the moment. He worked well this morning. And yeah, I think I think we're, we're leaning towards the Irish champion hurdle, but nothing's been confirmed as yet. Mm. Do you think he's back to very close to his best, if not quite fully there yet? He didn't look far off it yeah. in Cheltenham, in fairness to him, you know, um, and he, I'd say he jumped the best he's ever jumped, to be honest, that day. So uh, we're definitely getting there, yeah. Has that given you one of the best kicks you've had in recent seasons to see him recapture that mojo? I know you've paid a lot of credit to Robbie Pear and the guys behind the scenes, yeah, but it did look know, pretty bleak for a while. Yeah, it? it did look bleak and yeah, it was brilliant. It is brilliant. But you know what? It's a real team thing, you know, vets, physios, Robbie doing the pre-training. Um, all our team at home, uh, everyone involved. It's it's uh, it, it's a real team effort. Well, yeah, we'd love to see him at Leopardstown. Hopefully, we will. Just before we let you go, Arctic Brazil coming up in the next. What do we think? Yeah, he ran well. First run over fences. Just lo all looked a bit quick for him. So we're stepping up in trip, and we'll see how he is on on this you know testing ground. Good man. It's been a great day so far. Well done, Henry. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Good thanks. Care. Watch live racing now on RacingTV.com.